I totally agree and I love it. Uh, what we do is maybe a bit in addition, because we, uh, my profession is train people, yeah. not, not do consultation in the first place. So we have people from all kinds of com companies and they learn together to supervise each other. We do a lot of dialogic uh, work and uh, the, the teachers are not always present. So we develop a didactic help them to sit together, find a focus, decide whether it's more a question of developing of a design with the examples they bring in, or is it more a question of reflecting their own behavior, or is it more a question uh, of dealing with their emotions, or more questions whether it has to do with their identity, where they, to uh, what places they want to develop themselves and their professional career and so on. And uh, we uh, offer them a lot of small concepts, give them good questions, and we offer them settings through which they can learn with each other without having to invent it uh, each time. Mm -hmm. And so there are some rituals. Everybody knows if we do a design uh, exercise, it's not about confronting behavior, it's about thinking about designing. And so we build okay. up a culture of learning and we try to build it up in a way that these people can take the same instruments to their companies and multiply it by working with others. But this uh, includes a kind of idea who should be in, uh, who should be, it's not just the groups there. If you do some, a new project, you have to decide who should be on the stage. Sure. And so it's a didactic also helps me to understand which kind of focus do I want to follow. And dependent on the focus, I have to choose people who should be there, also as they are not sitting together on the same floor. And when my focus changes, uh, uh, it, the, the, the people change who should be in, in the, on the stage and so on. So we are developing a lot of didactic frame of references and, and tools people can use uh, to take all these questioning that you do in the direct contact into their own contact and multiply it to, to help thus also to build up a learning culture in this company because then everybody knows somehow the language somehow um, the settings and the procedures of how it can be clarified now. Now we, we, we talk to the content, now we talk to the process, now we go on a meta level, now we think about it is embedded in the context and so on. So these tools, yes. what are they, manuals or instruction sheets or what, what are they? Yeah, it's very different. Let's say one of our approaches, our main topics, is um, a responsibility culture. Responsibility yeah. for me is ability to respond, and we have a, a simple schematized thing. You have to check uh, willing, being able to, uh, have to do, equipped and allowed to do, to give an answer. Yeah. And sometimes people always work on, am I able to give the answers and do not find out that they are not equipped and not uh, enough supported to give the answers they have to give in their organizational role. And so we, we teach the schema that these are four different dimensions that together give a good dealing with responsibility. And then we give them a case where dimensions are missing, others are overdone once they can find out whether they did understand the concept. And then in groups of four, each of them brings in a situation and says, how is it in these four dimensions of responsibility? How do I look at this example? And the others listen. And they are mirroring whether the an analysis this person is doing on his own case makes sense to them or not. And this is a didactic. And you can take this whole this didactic uh, the, the person can take to his team at home and, and do the same thing. So we are uh, we uh, try to build up a learning culture that is totally compatible 
with uh, role, understandings, cultural behaviors in, in the organizational field. We do not much work with learning culture elements that they could not take away right. and multiply. So that's around responsibility. Can you give me some other examples of such didactics? Let's say if we have the topic of power, uh, then usually uh, people uh, are in the, uh, uh, those people who come to us in the mindset of uh, power is something a bit ugly. Uh, very often I am more the victim of power processes and uh, they are not clear about that say, in organizational roles they often need power and they are good versions of power. So we help them to differentiate different uh, kinds of power and then we can create small cases where it's much easier uh, to use power in a good way to orient everybody what has to be done and what are the priorities and then they learn the, uh, this differentiation and then they think of situations, examples where they have a, a uh, that comes to their mind and where they think this might be a, a power question and then they try to use this model yeah, on the situations and and l uh, try to, to handle it and just listen to it and yeah. then give feedback whether it makes sense to them or not. Uh, where do you get your case materials? They bring it from their uh, organizational world. We are, we, are, we, are on, we are only working with people who are al already in jobs, very often in very so the, the case material is actually not written down ahead of time? No, it's sometimes it's, it's one to, to, clear, to illustrate the model. But the, the, the main learning is trying to apply it to case materials they bring uh, uh, from their own companies and from their own work. How do you react to this kind of didactic approach? Sometimes. I get the reaction, oh, that's too, too much educational. I think it's entirely a function of what happens in the earlier interview of whether that appears to be something that will help the organization or not. Mm -hmm. If I'm sitting with that executive and he's, he begins, gives me examples that that his people really don't understand power dynamics at all, they're misusing it. Uh, we might, in a conversation, say, well, would a training program in that area be something you would want to do? Mm -hmm. And if it really appeals to him and it sounds like it really is a thing to do, then I would find myself having to find someone like you mm -hmm. to do it. I wouldn't. You wouldn't do it yourself. Probably you? not. I might do something. I mean, I do educational stuff all the time in groups. So I'm working with a group of doctors here and administrators, and they they got onto the subject of of careers. And I said, do you know about career anchors, which is this yeah, one of work the concepts, I've done? Famous they said, no. So I said, well, let me take 10 minutes. Okay. And so I give them the 10-minute lecture on career anchors right then and there. So that happens a lot, that I become momentarily didactic, so you but do I don't a have a toolkit yeah. to bring into the situation. Yeah. Maybe this is different because we are a school and we have uh, hundreds of people we train. I cannot be there all the time. Right. So, so we need to somehow yeah. put it into a didactic system and more and more also doing on video with charts, self-learning programs. With media. And you have evidence that the companies are able to use it on their own? Uh, not from one second to the other second, but we have companies who send sincere professionals of all kinds to our training programs. And so it's not, not only one person who knows the system, there are several people who know the system. They are from the HR department, they are from leadership, they are from controlling all the, And they together can uh, then introduce 
sees didactic models and the programs and design it specifically for the organization. Uh, for example, as a preparation for OD, OD or for supervision, a uh, supervision light within the OD and all these things. And um, if if the culture of the organization is close enough to what we are trying to do, then it is really working fine. We have a lot of good examples, and we do conferences sharing these examples. Right. Now I think it makes total sense if you have a school slash training part of your your whole uh, helping set. Mm -hmm. uh, it just happens that as a professor, I might do those kinds of exercises in my classrooms, right. but I wouldn't necessarily bring them into my consulting. Yeah, uh, I understand this. And there is the danger that I've seen in, in diagnostic OD, mm -hmm. that we begin to listen for the problem in terms of which of my tools are right. gonna fit. <laughs> so How I've can been, I fit reality into my tools and not vice versa? Uh, and that's, to me, the biggest problem with the consulting companies. Yeah. They only want to sell their tools. They don't really wanna help. Sometimes uh, it's not a motivation question, but it's not, uh, say, I have to limit the frame of reference. Say, uh, and so it's like many of your concepts help to open uh, the set of frame of references that can be used, and then people start to uh, see the necessity and the uh, cr creativity that they have to choose. And if nothing really fits very well, they have out of the elements you offered, developed something new that might fit this time. 